Hi, my name is Sophia Zane. I'm currently living in San Francisco, California, and I'm a rising senior at Lowell High School. I'm very interested in science, and some of the possible future majors that I want to major in college are biology and chemistry. I'm trying to go for pre-med and hopefully getting into a med school after four years of undergrad. In the following lectures, I'll be mainly talking about biology and chemistry related topics, and I'll also throw in some kitchen chemistry as well as science that, sciences that apply in real life. And now let's get into our first lecture about protein. I'm going to start off with some kitchen chemistry. Boiling eggs is something that most people do every day, and we know that raw eggs are in a liquid state and cooked eggs are in a solid state. But have you guys ever thought about why does the egg change once you boil it? We say that boiling an egg is a chemical change, and thus there's a chemical reaction happening in this process. Now, here's the question. How do we identify if a reaction is a physical reaction or a physical change, or if it's a chemical reaction or chemical change? We say that a physical change is a reversible change in the physical properties of a substance, such as a change in state, size, or shape. A common example that I like to use is when you melt an ice cube to water, it's a change in state. The water is still in water, obviously. It's just the state of the water that changed. And same thing, when you evaporate water, liquid water, into water vapor, the water itself didn't change. It's just the state of the water that changed. Well, a chemical change occurs when the substance composition is changed and a product is made. And this means that something new is produced from this reaction. And we say that most of the chemical reactions are irreversible. This means that um, an example that we can use connecting back to the egg is that we can always cook a raw egg, but however, once it's cooked, it's cooked. We can never turn the cooked egg back into a raw egg. The reason why boiling an egg is a chemical change is because that the heat taken by the egg causes permanent changes to the molecular structure of the egg, and this means that the composition of the egg is changed. The new substance in this case is the cooked egg, and it's formed, and thus the reaction will be irreversible. And we can also look at the picture right here. Um, this is the opposite as what I said as an example, they freeze the wa liquid water into an ice cube. This is also a change in state. And so we say that it is a physical change. But once we do a chemical reaction and water is converted into hydrogen peroxide, we realize that water is no longer water, it's hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, we say that it is a chemical change. Now here's another question. How did the egg change from this yellowish liquid into a hard white solid? To answer this question, we need to first talk about the eggs and the molecular structure. We know that eggs consist of three main parts, the shell, the shell, the egg white, which is a liquid, and the egg yolk. And in this case, I want to mainly focus on the egg white. Egg whites are rich in protein, and it is the protein in the egg that caused the eggs to become hard once it's boiled. But what is protein though? Protein is one of the four macromolecules, which includes protein, carbohydrate, lipid, and nucleic acid. I'll be introducing the other three in the next following lectures. Proteins are essential nutrients for our human body, and it is also one of the essential building blocks of our body tissue. Our muscles, which is what allows us to move, in fact, contain a lot of protein. Protein also serves as a fuel source, and it provides us energy. So when you eat meat, when you eat salmon, it provides us energy. Some of the common functions of proteins include repair and build your body's tissues, allows metabolic reactions to take place, as well as it coordinates our bodily functions. And now I want to talk about protein at a molecular and biological level. Proteins are made up of something called amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks uh, for protein. Here's a picture of the amino acid. Each amino acid contains four parts. An amino group right here, which is an NH2 group, 
a carboxyl group, which is a COOH group, a hydrogen, and an R group. Another name of R group is a side chain. Differences in the side chain, which we also call the R group, can cause different properties of the protein. Once we connect two amino acids together, this is one amino acid, this is another amino acid. Once we connect the two together, we form something called a polypeptide. And the two amino acids are connected together by something called a peptide bond. A protein may contain one or more than one polypeptide. When I first learned this, um, the concept that I'm always confused about is the differences between polypeptide and protein. So if the protein only contains one polypeptide, it'll look like this. It'll look just like a polypeptide. But however, if it contains more than one polypeptide, if it has like two, three, four polypeptides joining together, forming like a overall structure of a protein, then it'll look like this. In summary, proteins are long chains of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. There are four structures of protein the primary structure, the secondary structure, the tertiary structure, and the quaternary structure. The, over, uh, the primary structure of the protein is the sequence of amino acids. You can think of it as when the amino acids join together, they form a sequence, which is a polypeptide, and that's simply this primary structure of the protein. The secondary structure of the protein is the coils and folds in a polypeptide we can see right here. There are two types of coils and folds, which are alpha helix and beta pleated sheet. Um, the coils and folds are there to create the 3D shape of the protein because if it's unfolded, then the sequence will be a linear shape, right? And we want the protein to be in a 3D shape. Also, I think I forgot to mention earlier, this is the primary structure of the protein. It is just a sequence of amino acids. Now, the tertiary structure of the protein is the 3D shape of a single polypeptide. And the point that I want to make here, it is the 3D shape of one single polypeptide. And it is a very important structure of the protein because it determines the protein's function. And the quaternary structure is the overall protein structure that results from interaction of two or more polypeptide. And um, the thing here is that not all proteins have a quaternary structure because as I mentioned earlier, not all proteins have more than one polypeptide. A quaternary structure can only form when two or more polypeptides they join together and they have some kind of interactions between them and that's when a quaternary structure can form. Now, Back to the egg problem. The reason why the egg became hard when we boiled it, after we boiled it, is because the protein in the egg is denatured. And what we meant by denaturation is that the protein has lost its native structure. Due to this denaturation, the secondary structure and tertiary structure of the egg's protein is destroyed. And here's a quick review, the secondary structure, which are the coils and folds of the protein, and the tertiary structure, which is the 3D shape of the protein, these two structures are destroyed. And this caused the egg to become hard. But however, the primary structure of the egg remained the same. And this means that the sequence of amino acids stays the same after we boil it. And here's just a picture for fun. There, this is the world record egg. Me personally, I've also liked this picture. I think it was like pretty funny. And thank you for listening to my lecture. If you have any questions of con if you have any questions or concerns, um, please feel free to email me or um, yeah, just leave an email and I'll reply as soon as possible. Thank you.